Merhaba, teşekkürler. Uh, i̇yi günler. Uh, I switched to English. Sorry, my Turkish is not that good so far. Uh, uh, as she was mentioning, uh, I uh, live uh, in Izmir, uh, in Turkey. And uh, today, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the technologies that are probably your, most of you are using in the servers uh, and what is happening now and so on. My focus would be on, uh, first of all, what is Broadcom? Because with so many acquisitions lately, uh, people just don't know who is doing what. So I will tell you what our company is. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, I will tell you uh, more about uh, our networking technologies, about our NIC chips, NIC cards, and how it is all connecting together uh, to make uh, the current uh, uh, modern server infrastructure in the cloud working. So, what Broadcom is? Uh, we are one of the biggest uh, chip manufacturers in the world. Uh, so, uh, we have uh, companies like Intel, Qualcomm, Broadcom. Uh, we are uh, not probably competing that much, uh, but uh, we all do uh, the chips and uh, uh, processors uh, to, to make all of this work. Uh, what is interesting about our company is that uh, you see in 2021, uh, we've done 27 uh, billions of revenue and we were investing a huge amount of it. So basically 5 billions out of this uh, 20, 27 uh, were uh, put into the new uh, direction, into the new development. It means that uh, all these high-speed interconnections I will be talking lately, uh, they are actually cutting edge, so we, we really invest a lot uh, to make it work. And we still we hold a lot of patents. Uh, I would say our company is capable now of doing whatever chip uh, is needed. Uh, this is, uh, I think, the most interesting slide because uh, all those acquisitions, nobody knows what it is. Um, actually, I'm coming from uh, this, uh, let's say, green part, LSI company. I was working there uh, 12 years ago. And then we were acquired by the company uh, called Avago. Uh, Avago is actually a semiconductor division of uh, Hewlett-Packard that was spun off, uh, lived a little bit uh, along, then made an IPO in 2009, and then they bought us. Uh, at the time, 2020, uh, 2014, uh, actually the company doubled. And then we acquired uh, another big company, Broadcom, and decided to name ourselves after Broadcom because Avago was not that popular, nobody knew the brand, and Broadcom was a little bit more developed. Then there were several acquisitions. I think you heard about the latest one, which is coming. It's mainly software. You see CA Technology is a software company, Symantec Enterprise Software Company. Uh, Brocade is the fiber channel uh, switches uh, was acquired. And then the latest one, we are now in the process of uh, buying VMware. It is still not happened, but let's see in the news. Uh, hopefully it goes through. So, uh, in terms of the data centers and uh, the clouds, uh, we are actually uh, doing several uh, things. First of all, it's a, a server storage connectivity. So, for server storage connectivity, we have fiber channel uh, HBAs, uh, we have uh, fiber channel sand fabric, so basically those brocade switches I was showing before um, in this circle. Then, of course, RAID adapters. Uh, uh, SAS and SEDA and ANV me now. Uh, and then uh, we do some stuff for uh, SSDs, HDDs in terms of the chips. You probably never see them as the Broadcom uh, chips, but they are uh, also in a lot of servers. And of course, Ethernet NICs. Uh, the other site I want to uh, talking a little bit later about is uh, networking. So basically, but uh, uh, some sources are saying that uh, with the probability of 99.5% uh, a pocket sent uh, in the internet is touching uh, several of our uh, switching chips during its way. 
So it's not even one, it's uh, several of them. It's going to be touching. This is uh, very interesting because uh, what I'm going to be talking about, the networking cards, they are closely tied uh, to the uh, server connectivity, to the NICs, basically. If you have a server and uh, if you have a NIC card in there, it is somehow connected to something. And usually it's a switch with a broad chip, Broadcom chip inside. Uh, basically, uh, you know, with all the protocols on the top of it, uh, not a lot of people care what is really happening on the physical layer. When two uh, surdeses are looking one into each other with the uh, optical lane, uh, Basically, uh, we know that all the errors are going to be corrected anyway, right? So if uh, some error occurs in the physical channel, um, uh, it will be uh, corrected on the uh, top level of uh, OC model. But uh, what is interesting, if uh, the third deaths are not very well aligned on the transmitting side and let's say on the switching side, uh, you can have a drop of a pocket and then you will have to resend information. It will give you the additional latency and so on. So uh, it is called uh, BER, bit error rate, and this bit error rate is actually tra translating into the latencies you have in the end. Um, so if you are using uh, the same silicon with the same technologies, and we are actually using the exactly same CERDESs, uh, when I was uh, talking about this, you know, merger and acquisitions, uh, all the companies, Avago, LSI, and Broadcom, we all had our own CERDESs. Uh, when we merged together, uh, we made an effort, uh, uh, brought them to the same uh, position, and basically, all of our speed, uh, high speed uh, interconnects, they're using exactly the same. So uh, in terms of compatibility, this is uh, very uh, interesting. Uh, we can compare us uh, with the other uh, manufacturers. You see, uh, NVIDIA, you know, right? So uh, they acquired a company uh, called Melanox. Now they have uh, Ethernet. Uh, in NVIDIA, then microSEMI is obvious, they are doing some PCI switching and storage, some uh, HBA rate controllers, and uh, yeah, PCI as I said. And Marvel, you probably knew them from the name QLogic in the past, so QLogic was acquired uh, by, um, uh, in the end, Marvel, I would say. And um, uh, coming back to this, uh, we have all of them. So all those uh, connectivities that you would have uh, in your uh, systems, uh, they would have uh, our chips and storage, Ethernet or PCI or fiber channel. Uh, in terms of the uh, products, when we are talking not about the chips but about the cards that you are putting uh, inside your uh, infrastructure service, uh, as I said, we have storage, uh, SAS, SATA, um, we have uh, Ethernet, uh, I will be talking mainly about Ethernet today, and of course PCI, let's say if you have a Intel based or uh, AMD based or even ARM based uh, server, uh, the PCI lanes, uh, if you don't have enough of them, you can use PCI switching to uh, get more uh, PCI connectivity. We're also doing this. This company was called PLX and was acquired um, uh, by, I think, Avago uh, as well. And then, of course, fiber channel, EMULX, don't forget, but probably you're not touching it that much uh, in the cloud infrastructures. It's more, uh, let's say, enterprise uh, type of uh, storage. Uh, interesting thing is about the Ethernet trends, what is happening currently on the market. So you see two uh, different pictures. We have cloud uh, and we have enterprise. They are uh, different but going the same direction. So you see uh, one gig uh, has almost uh, disappeared in 2019. We still have uh, one gig for, let's say, IPMI, for connecting to your servers, for managing uh, things like that. We also have uh, one gig, let's say, in, in industrial applications. But uh, in the cloud uh, data centers, it almost disappeared. Um, same goes for um, with enterprise world, but uh, a little bit, uh, let's say, with, with a little bit delay um, in terms of the timeline. Um, so basically, we can say that currently all the clouds, uh, internal cloud connections, are 100 gig plus. 
and uh, our current uh, enterprise, they are moving from 10 gig to 25 gig. It's also an interesting trend. You know, lately we had a huge problems, you know, after the pandemic started, uh, then um, people started to demand a lot of, let's say, Wi-Fi routers, notebooks and so on to, and to, to start working from home. And uh, basically, uh, it is still there, this uh, semiconductor crisis, it is still there. So if somebody is ordering uh, chips, uh, the delay between the order and the uh, manufacturer chip uh, is probably about uh, 50 weeks, about a year. Uh, still there. We uh, actually trying to work with this because, you know, uh, nobody will work uh, in, in these circumstances. Nobody will order and get your, let's say, uh, Ethernet NIC card in one year. So what we do, we actually, uh, we change the nodes. You know what the node is, is when the uh, semiconductor is manufactured, you have uh, 40 nanometers, uh, 16 nanometers, 5 nanometers and so on. So basically what we've done, uh, we moved from uh, 40, 28 to 16, 5. Uh, why does it matter? Because the newer uh, the process is, uh, the more capacity you have. Um, the main player in this market is TSMC, and basically, uh, whatever they built now, they built in the nodes of 16 slash 5, uh, even 3. I heard that uh, they are doing the new fab on 3 nanometers. So basically, we are getting rid of the older devices, uh, moving to the new ones, because there is a better availability, we can manufacture it. Uh, not all the manufacturers followed this path. Somebody said, okay, I am still fine. I will try to manipulate it, but uh, we uh, changing to the better technology nodes. Then uh, uh, we are increasing uh, the number of the factories who are doing boards for us. Uh, and of course, multi-source, so we have many, many projects where we uh, source the materials uh, to make it happen. Uh, we're increasing the test capacities because the semiconductors, when I, they are uh, done, uh, you need to test them. And of course, uh, we do the buffer stocks uh, to ensure um, that we are good. And you see, as a result, uh, since uh, 2020, we significantly increased the production capacity. So, uh, especially in the NICs, this is mainly about the NICs, uh, we uh, are really trying to uh, get to the position number one in the top uh, manufacturers, um, and we uh, put a lot of efforts there. Um, what we also uh, wanted to say here is that uh, we have all the speeds, you see, uh, from uh, Ethernet standpoint, we still have one gig, pretty popular because we have four ports. Uh, for, let's say, uh, routing and things like this uh, on the server base. Uh, we still have one gig. And uh, the latest uh, chips we are having, uh, they are already support 200 gig uh, link speeds. In terms of the form factors, you would probably be interested. You see we have OCP. OCP stands for Open Computing Platform, which was started many years ago with uh, the guys from Facebook, but it's now uh, uh, actually um, getting to many, many different projects, uh, including the data centers and so on all over the world, not only Facebook. So you see we have uh, 2.0. It's a little bit uh, going down, uh, and then the next one, OCP 3.0, uh, has popped up. So we have many uh, cards in this form factor. And of course, we are having the standard PCI NIC. And in the markets, you see, uh, we are very good in the telecom, we are very good in the cloud, enterprise, uh, machine learning, storage, actually, uh, everywhere. So this is how those cards uh, usually look like. So, for example, for OCP 3.0, uh, we have uh, different form factors uh, with the normal PCI. Uh, we have the normal PCI card. Uh, also, you can see how the, uh, let's say, uh, this connector that is making the connectivity happen uh, is changing. Um, you see for 1 gig and 10 gig, we had uh, copper cables, uh, the standard RG45. Uh, for uh, 10 gig, uh, we had SFP uh, and uh, 
for uh, you see SFP, SFP Plus, SFP28, they are actually all backwards compatible. And uh, for the uh, quad lanes, it's uh, four times uh, several uh, optical lanes. Uh, we see the trend moving from QSFP Plus, which is 40 gig, four times 10, to uh, 200 uh, gig with the uh, four by uh, 50. Those are the cables. We can use optics. This is called active optical cable. And uh, we can have uh, the copper as well. Uh, distances are not huge, three, five meters maybe uh, maximum, uh, but uh, copper is still used there. So uh, let me show you a little bit about the chips. Uh, I don't want to uh, put a lot of attention on what are the differentiators. Uh, NX1 is the one gig. You see we're still making them. Uh, Whitney Plus is a 10 gig chip uh, per lane. So we are still doing them. You see the notes. I was showing this 65 nanometers, 28 nanometers. And then our flagship uh, chip, which is Tor. Um, it was recently designed, I think, in production for about three years. Now, it is already 16 nanometers, and the next generation is going to be five. And we are actually moving uh, the majority of our customers to this Tor currently. Uh, and this Tor, uh, also interesting thing, is here. So we are changing the um, network service. If the previous uh, guys were using uh, NRZ, which stands for uh, non-return to zero. This is the type modulation that was used in the uh, optical line. Now we're moving to pump four, which means that uh, you are using four different levels of signal uh, in um, the optical line. It helps us to continue increasing the speeds. And you see <coughs> the overall bandwidth. Uh, we are having 50 gig, 100 gig, 200 gig within the Tor family. Next generation will be already 400 gig per chip. So it means that you can have 2 by 200 or uh, 8 by 500, depending on your configurations. Uh, as I mentioned, mezzanine to the zero, we have many uh, different uh, options. OCP 3.0, we have many different options starting from 1 gig, ending uh, 2 times 100, which can work at 200 speed as well. And of course, uh, the standard PCI adapters. So why uh, uh, Broadcom um, could be interesting? Uh, you see, uh, we offer really a long uh, life cycle of the product. It is important uh, because uh, when we start the projects, let's say, with telecom, they will never change the card inside their appliance. Uh, they need to use it for as long as it is possible. And uh, our flagship uh, chip, which is Tor, uh, is really good with the telecom tasks. So basically, um, you know, with 5G, the latency should be uh, as small as it is possible. And uh, we have uh, all those capabilities uh, inside uh, our chips, and it means in the end devices as well. Uh, we uh, do the uh, RDMA. Uh, you probably know uh, what RDMA stands for. Uh, remote the, mm, direct memory access. Um, and we are very good in security, you know, with the big data centers, there is a big uh, problem with the um, attacks on the hardware right now. So if somebody wants to uh, attack your data center, they can replace the firmware, let's say, on the NIC adapter. And uh, it can be a big problem, then the information can be intercepted, sent to the other uh, direction and so on. Uh, we uh, have this uh, secure feature inside uh, the network chip that allows to boot only from the uh, sources uh, that we trust. So basically we uh, write to the memory, one time uh, read memory, uh, the special code, and then uh, when you boot up the firmware, it's just not going to run uh, if uh, the uh, code doesn't allow it. So, as I said, a long life, uh, advanced features. So we have uh, RDMEs, we have uh, all the offloads that are needed uh, to work within the internet. Um, of course, advanced security, 
and the power efficiency. So for the data centers, power efficiency is uh, um, very important. Uh, in some cases, we can uh, reduce at the same, uh, let's say, level of throughput uh, compared with the competitors. We can deliver two times lower uh, power consumption. And here, you know, you probably heard those stories when you just change a small uh, diet LED, you know, which is showing if the server is running or not. Uh, you can, uh, in the scale of the data center, you can get a huge, uh, 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 let's say, power um, efficiency. Uh, with us, it's actually watts. So basically, um, uh, our cart usually consumes about 11 watts, and some of the competitors, they do about 20. Uh, if you have, let's say, two carts in one server, it's already uh, 20 watts just changing the cart. Uh, very interesting. Uh, okay, so uh, that's actually what I uh, wanted uh, to tell you about uh, our NIX. Uh, it's really our uh, focus right now. But remember, we have fiber channel, we have storage, we have everything. And actually, um, we are now uh, starting to put more efforts uh, into uh, Turkey. So uh, we are actually looking for the partners here. Uh, if you have interesting projects, if you have uh, business-wise uh, interest uh, in uh, in integrating our products into your solutions and so on, uh, please come to me and uh, we will talk. I I'm, I'm here by the end of the day. And thank you so much. Thanks for your attention. Have a good day.